Well, thank you all very much for uh, being here. Uh, I'm Mike Thompson from California's 4th Congressional District and the chairman of the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really good weather if you're duck hunting. And I don't usually uh, make a hunting comment uh, before we talk about gun violence prevention, but I thought it was appropriate this morning, not just because of the weather, because when you're duck hunting, the federal law prohibits you from having more than three shells in a gun. And today we're going to talk about uh, high capacity magazines where there are no limits in most places. The last president recently said to quote, get over it, unquote, after that terrible high school shooting uh, in Iowa. Well, you don't just get over 40,000 Americans killed by someone using a gun or 656 mass shootings are what is now the leading cause of death for children and for teenagers. There are many tools that dangerous people use to modify firearms and commit terrible acts, and large capacity magazines are one of those tools. They allow people who are a danger to themselves and to others to inflict massive carnage in a short period of time without stopping to reload. A mass shooting in my district at the Veterans Home in Yontville, California a couple of years ago, a shooter used a 20-round magazine. The Keep Americans Safe Act will prospectively ban the sale, manufacture, transfer, or possession of a large capacity ammunition feeding device that holds more than 15 rounds of ammunition. That's 12 more than the federal government allows you uh, to use on windy days like today when you're duck hunting. So I'm proud now uh, to introduce the author of that bill and a very long time uh, proponent for gun violence prevention, uh, Representative Diana DeGette. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike, and thank you for all of your, thank you for all of your wonderful leadership on gun safety issues. And you're exactly right. You, you're not going to go duck hunting with a hundred round high capacity magazine. The only thing that high capacity magazines are used for is to kill people. They originally were invented for military situations, but now sadly they're being used all across our country to kill our civilians. I want to thank Mike Thompson. I want to thank Jason Crow, my colleague from Colorado. I want to thank the House Democratic leadership, Whip Clark, Chair Aguilar, for joining our push to get this bill to the floor. According to every town, in mass shootings with four or more people killed between 2015 and 2022, high capacity magazines led to more than twice as many people killed and nearly 10 times as many people wounded per incident on average. And the reason is because high capacity magazines allow the shooter to shoot many more people in a short burst of fire than with any other, uh, any other method. So this human cost is immeasurable and it's unnecessary. So I think a lot about the shooting that we had at the Aurora Movie Theater, which is in my colleague, Representative Crow's district, and which is just a few miles from my home. He will probably talk more about that, but in that theater, there were a large number of current military personnel and retired military personnel. But when that shooter got up with a 100 round magazine, they were unable to stop mass casualties. 12 people were killed and 58 people were injured in just a very short few minutes. In Boulder, which is just north of my district, um, there was a, a shooting with high capacity magazines that claimed 10 lives. It goes on and on and on. And so we need comprehensive gun safety legislation. All of us here today are committed to that but one thing we could do right now, here today, is we could ban these high capacity magazines, 
which have no other purpose than to kill many, many people in a very short period of time. This morning, I, I, I filed a discharge petition on the floor of the House of Representatives, and I'm urging all of my colleagues, not just on the Democratic side of the aisle, but across the aisle as well, to sign this petition to bring this very important legislation to the floor. I'm now really happy to, to I'm, now, I'm now happy to introduce my co-sponsor of the underlying legislation, my colleague and uh, my dear friend, Brad Snyder. Brad. Thank you, Diana. And I want to thank all my colleagues here for their support. Uh, I actually grew up in Denver. My sister lives lived not, not a mile away from Aurora the theater where that shooting took place. Today I live in Highland Park, Illinois. I represent 10th District of Illinois. On July 4th of 2022, a deranged young man with a assault weapon and a high capacity magazine fired 83 shots in less than 60 seconds. On a parade with people walking and celebrating the 4th of July, thousands of people along the parade route together with families, friends, for the first time after COVID being together, shattered, devastated in the blink of an eye. Seven people were killed, dozens were wounded, and the community was devastated. To a great extent, the carnage that was created on that day was exacerbated by the availability of these high capacity magazines. Following the shooting in Highland Park, I'm pleased that here in the House, remarkably, we passed an assault weapons ban with a bipartisan vote. And in Illinois, an assault weapons ban became the law of the land, the law of the state. We have so much that we can do to protect people as they go about their lives, celebrating the independence of our nation as a community, joining in communities of faith, in churches, synagogues, and mosques, or simply going to school or taking in a movie. Taking in a movie. And that's why we're here today, introducing this discharge petition, saying do the responsible thing. We can make a difference, we can save lives, and every, save, every life saved is an entire world. A world to their family, a world to their community. Thank you very much. It, it, it is my pleasure now to introduce our, our whip, Catherine Clark. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all of my colleagues who stand here today. And once again, House Democrats are leading the way. Once again, it is our caucus putting people over politics. And thank you to Congresswoman Diana DeGette for crafting a bill that does exactly what its title says, keep Americans safe. This legislation will get the tools of wars out of our communities, off of our streets, banning the high capacity magazines that have been used to wreak so much destruction in our country and steal away so many loved ones. And as always, I'm grateful for a leader who is driving this fight forward every day our champion of common sense, the chair of our gun violence prevention task force, Congressman Mike Thompson. Your work and the work of the entire task force has never been more important. This is the 10th day of the year and more than a thousand Americans have already been killed by guns. Gunfire raining down on a New Year's Eve party just minutes after midnight students in Iowa running from a gunman on their first day back to the, from the holidays. That's what America looks like in 2024. That's what life looks like when guns are the leading cause of death for our children. Gun violence is a public health crisis. It's in its scale and in its horror. The staggering death counts, the lives cut short, the parents and loved ones left to suffer. What could possibly be more worthy of our attention? What could possibly be a greater priority? But we've seen this story before. Democrats push for universal background checks. 
the GOP blocks it. Democrats propose an assault weapons ban, Republicans block it. Democrats introduce this bill to get high capacity magazines off our streets, Republican leadership keeps it off the floor. So while we stand, while they stand by as these murders continue in our communities, House Democrats will take matters into our own hands. This discharge petition has the power to save lives. If there's anyone on the other side of the aisle who is sick of the inaction, tired of the carnage, here's your chance to put kids over guns, to put people over politics, to do something for the people who elected you. This isn't politics, it's common sense. And it's what the federal government is here for, keeping our country safe. It's a new year, so let's get to work and do our jobs. And now it is my privilege to yield to the chair of our House Democratic Caucus, a champion in this fight for gun safety, Pete Aguilar. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Whip Clark. I want to thank Whip Clark because she has also been a leader on these issues, uh, leading the House Democratic Caucus um, uh, time and time again in our efforts to bring attention to this. And to uh, Chairman Mike Thompson and the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force, uh, thank you for continuing to shine a light on the importance of protecting lives and ensuring safety uh, in our communities. And to Congresswoman Diana DeGette for your leadership on behalf of your community. Uh, she understands all too well the toll of gun violence uh, and it has taken and its effects on our communities. We're two weeks into the new year and communities across America have already endured preventable tragedy of mass shooting. Just last week, a gunman opened fire at a school in Iowa, uh, as Chairman Thompson said, killing an 11-year-old and forever changing the lives of everyone who knew him in the entire Perry community. And yet a couple days later, Donald Trump told the same community to get over it. House Democrats have a clear message for their former president. We will not get over gun violence and mass shootings. America will never get over mass shootings and will always stand up for each other. Meanwhile, President Biden renewed his call for gun safety legislation when he addressed uh, the Mother Emanuel AME Church where nine black parishioners were shot and killed by a white supremacist during Bible study. The contrast could not be more clear. While House Republicans and Donald Trump tell us to simply get over it, Democrats have a plan to fight the gun violence epidemic and create safer communities across this country. This discharge petition for the Keep Americans Safe Act is just one piece. It'll prevent anyone from owning and selling large capacity ammunition magazines that have been used in far too many mass shootings. So where are the so-called Republican moderates when we need them to stand up for gun violence prevention? We only need five, five Republicans to stand with America's children to save lives. Stop bending a knee to the MAGA extremism and join House Democrats uh, in doing so. Now I'll turn it over to someone who is a leader in our Congress, a combat veteran uh, from the state of Colorado, Jason Crow. Hi, I'm Jason Crow from the, the great state of Colorado. I'd like to thank Chairman uh, Pete Aguilar, uh, our esteemed whip, Kathleen uh, Clark, uh, and my uh, dear friend, uh, Diana DeGette, the author of this legislation and a tremendous leader in the state of Colorado nationally on this issue, uh, as well as my fellow combat veteran uh, and the chairman of our Gun Violence Prevention Task Force, Mike Thompson, for his incredible leadership and just fortitude pushing this issue uh, year after year after year to achieve some progress. In Colorado, we are fortunate to have a state legislature focused on gun reform when Congress fails to make significant change due to Republican stonewalling over and over again. Colorado is the 11th in the nation for gun law strength as a result of that local leadership. Uh, included in that is a ban on high capacity magazines. You see, we are no stranger to the horrors of gun violence in Colorado. We've seen some of the state's worst mass shootings, many of which have happened in my district. 
The residents of my district know all too well the devastating and long-lasting impacts that gun violence has on our community. In 1999, two gunmen killed 15 of their classmates and wounded 23 others at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado. They used high-capacity magazines. In 2012, a gunman opened fire in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, killing 12 and wounding 28 in a matter of minutes. He used high-capacity magazine. In 2021, a gunman killed 10 innocent people at a grocery store in Boulder, Colorado. He used a high-capacity magazine. In 2022, five people were killed and 18 wounded in a hate-fueled shooting at Club Q in Colorado Springs, Colorado. That gunman used high-capacity magazines. As a combat veteran, I know that high-capacity magazines are meant to inflict maximum damage in a short period of time. They're used for war. They allow you to use them to reload less, to fire at a high, high rate, something that as a hunter growing up, I never had to do. I grew up hunting. I never once used a 20, 30, 40, or higher capacity magazines. They are meant for war and combat and have no place on the streets of America. So I'm proud to stand here with all of my colleagues, my dear friend Dinah Deguette, to advocate for this discharge petition for the Keep Americans Safe Act. This is a common sense bill that the vast majority of Americans support. And if we are going to fight back against the gun lobby and do what's in the best interest of our children, we will get behind, we will support this discharge petition, we will get it done. Our country, our constituents, and our community are counting on us. Uh, so with that, I'm very happy to pass this back to our chairman, Mike Thompson. Thank you very much. Thank to all my colleagues in the uh, gun violence prevention outside groups who are here today uh, who understand the importance of this, how it will save lives, and how uh, there's no one in the House who should be opposed to this. As has been outlined uh, by everyone who spoke, there is no reason to have a magazine that feeds bullets into a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, in, 10s, 20s, 30 capacity. It, 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 there's no reason for that unless you want to harm people. Anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ashley Banks with the Brio. Uh, first, I have, I have two questions. The first one is, how do you think Republicans are going to respond to this? I know uh, Congressman Aguilera was talking about you just need five. How do you think they will respond to this? And two, obviously there's a lot of talk about mass shootings, but what are you guys doing to crack down on the everyday gun violence that we're seeing in cities like Baltimore and even here in Washington, D.C.? Both great questions. Uh, and to your point, every day 30 people are killed by someone using a gun. And if you add accidental deaths and, uh, and uh, suicides, that number jumps up to over 100 people a day. And we are working on this issue every day. This is one of many discharge petitions that we have filed uh, in this Congress because our Republican colleagues are unwilling to bring these common sense pieces of legislation, legislation with great support from the American people to the floor for a vote. So this is our way to try and put pressure on the Republican majority to take up these issues to save lives. I'm hopeful that there will be Republicans who understand that these things are not necessary. It's not a violation of your Second Amendment, that they're only used to harm people and ruin communities, and that will have the courage to stand with us, sign this petition, and put pressure on their leadership to bring this measure to the floor for a vote. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think you can ask any member here. Uh, this is something that we're always uh, trying to do. We're trying to convince our Republican colleagues, explain to them, show them the polls. that It's not a part. The only place this is partisan is right behind us. These have every one of the bills that we've uh, filed discharge petitions on have overwhelming voter support. Thank you all very much. Thank you.